Chapter 16, Never Seen Two gnomes stood waiting by the river, watching the colorful reeds sway in the rushing water. It should have been a peaceful moment, but their stance was too rigid. Their gray eyes were clouded with trouble when they turned to watch Sophie and Kala barrel down the winding stairs with Fitz, Keith, Dex, Della, and Bianca behind them. This is Lur, Kala said, struggling to catch her breath as she pointed to a gnome in pants and a vest woven from leaves, and his wife, Mitya. We ask for the collective, Lor said in Nomish. Kala used the same special language, sounding like rustling leaves. The collective is in the lost cities, so I brought the Moonlark and her friends to help. Lor and Mitya straightened at that, and their eyes stayed fixed on Sophie as Kala introduced the rest of the group. She looks younger than I imagined, Mitya whispered in Nomish, too young to bear this burden. She has borne far worse, Kala reminded them. Sophie couldn't tell if Kala knew she could understand them, but she decided to clue them in. Whatever it is, I can handle it, she said with a perfect accent. Lur and Mitya lowered their heads and switched to the enlightened language. We meant no disrespect, Miss Foster, Lur said. We did not realize how far your gift stretched, and it is an honor to meet you in person. Lur and Mitya have served the Black Swan nearly as long as I have, Kala explained, usually from afar, keeping an ear to the ground, so to speak. They were actually the ones who found the hideout where the never seen held you captive. You did? Dex asked. I've always wondered how they found us. So have I, Sophie agreed. It really was not much, Nitya said. The roots told us of the voices hiding deep in the earth. All we did was listen. Sophie had no idea what that meant, but she knew enough to say, Still, thank you. Yeah, Dex mumbled. I'd be dead right now if it weren't for you. If it weren't for you guys. Those were dark days, Kala agreed. It was an all call to action. Everyone scrambling, using any resource they had to search the layers of her planet. We were beginning to lose hope when Lur and Mitya had delivered the report. And what is the report you came to give today? Della asked, reminding everyone why they were there. Lur and Mitya shared a look, then focused on Sophie. We will tell you, Lur said, and let you decide if we'll share with the others. I would not recommend it, Mitya added, her focus drifting to Keith. Sophie's heart deflated, and she barely remembered to use Nomish when she said, This is about his mother. Lur nodded. We spotted three of the never seen on our patrol today, on the far side of the Lake of Blood. The Lake of Blood, Sophie repeated, making sure she'd properly translated the words. This is what we call it, Nidia agreed. The Stark Hill Valley was once lush and hardy. But the ogres dammed the river and let everything wither on the southern end. The lake that remains is red and acidic. Many things that touch its surface do not survive. And the elves allowed that? Sophie asked. The elves allow many things. An edge had crept in the lure stone, turning the words to a windstorm. The lake of blood lies in the neutral territories, Mitya explained. And many have long suspected the ogres room in the valley to allow them to hide a stockade in the mountains. Uh, are you guys going to start using words us non-polyglots can understand? Keith interrupted. Because I think I speak for everyone when I say we want to know what's going on. I will soon, Sophie promised. I still need the rest of the story. She switched, she switched back to Nomish. What was his mom doing? Nothing, Lur said. And that is the problem. She is in serious danger, Mitya added. It's even possible she... What? Sophie asked when neither of them finished. Lur heaved a sigh. His mother was badly injured when we saw her. Injured how? From the battle? The last time Sophie had seen G Lady Gisela, she'd hurled herself off a cliff of Mount on Mount Everest, relying on a mysterious ogre's skill called face shifting to save her. Mitya shook her head. Her marks were the work of an ogre. They have a tool that leaves a very recognizable wound. Why would they? Sophie started, then answered her own question. They tortured her? Quite brutally, Lur shuddered. Sophie sucked in air, trying to think through the explosion of emotions. But the never seen are partners with the ogres. Yes, but the ogres do not tolerate failure, Lur explained, especially when it comes to the capture of prisoners. 
and the ogre code of warfare, that is the worst possible offense. And Lady Gisela allowed Getten to be taken. So you think the ogres tortured her and brought her to that stockade you mentioned? It's possible, Lur said. Or, Mitya took Sophie's hand. Her fingers were calloused, but still soft as they tied it around her own. There are other rumors about the lake of blood, stories of a pyre where the ogres burn the bodies of those they kill. It is possible that it's only a legend, but the never-seen dragged Lady Gisela into a cave. She was bleeding and wounded and screaming for mercy. After they were gone, all I found was blood. The cave could have been a secret entrance to the prison though, right? Sophie asked. Anything is possible, Blair agreed, but that would not explain the smoke we saw drifting from the mountains. Sophie swayed and Gif grabbed her, holding her steady as he whispered, Please tell me what they're saying. You said you wouldn't hide things from me. I won't, Sophie told him, hoping she could keep her promise. She pulled slowly away from him, asking Lur and Mitya in Nomish, Is that all you saw? Yes, Lur said, but we will continue investigating. We stopped only because we felt the collective should know that the hierarchy of the never seen has shifted. Lady Gisela holds no authority. She is either a prisoner or a casualty. Can you understand what they're saying, Mom? Bianna asked. I'm only catching bits and pieces, but the hitch in Della's voice made it clear she'd understood enough. Please, Foster, give back. I heard, I've heard them say my mom's name. I'm going crazy here. I need to verify first, she told him. There could be a misunderstanding. It was a frayed strand of hope, but she was going to cling to it with everything she had. Can I have permission to search her memories? She asked Mitya. I need to say exactly what you saw. Reading our minds is not like reading that of your own kind, Mitya said. It will be exhausting and you already look weary. I can handle it, Sophie said, reaching for Mitya's temples. She rallied her full mental strength, slipped into Mitya's mind, and tangled in a web of memories. No, not a web. These were branches, a mental forest, wild and unruly. Each memory coiled like vines, wrapping so tightly, there was no way to shove through. Even a brain push, a specialized telepath trick, trick, couldn't break past the gnarled chaos. And the trees seemed to grow and stretched until Sophie couldn't see how to escape the endless woods. You need help, Fitz said, sounding very far away. I'm coming in. Sophie was too lost to warn him. Wow, this is insane, Fitz transmitted as his consciousness tangled near hers. We can't stay here, Sophie said. It's pulling us farther and farther away, but I'm not strong enough to break out. Okay, so what if we pull our energy, Fitz asked, or to try. She imagined her consciousness slithering across the vines like a snake. Fitz did the same, and when they finally reached each other, Whoa, is this what it's like to be cognates? She asked as a surge of warm energy worked like the sun, drawing the trees toward their light and leaving spaces for Sophie and Fitz to move. No idea, Fitz admitted, but it's awesome. It definitely was. The memory forest had divided into dozens of paths and Sophie chose the darkest. Nightmares clawed with thorny stems, but with Fitz's help, they pushed to the path's end. There they found a cold star tree, empty and quiet, but Sophie could see the truth hidden in the branches at the top. Fitz's consciousness gave Sophie a boost and they climbed together, watching in wary silence as the memory unfolded. Two black-cloaked figures dragged a decloaked Lady Gisela past a red lake with dead carcasses scattered along the shore. Sophie could tell Keith's mom had been wounded, but she couldn't see how bad the injuries were until Mitya snuck ahead of them and slipped into the bushes. The never seen passed by, mere fit from her Mitya head, and Sophie felt her stomach heave when she saw the deep curved puncture wounds on Lady Gisela's face. She had dozens of them carved into her cheeks, her chin, her neck. Please, Lady Gisela begged as the figures dragged her toward the mountains. Her captors ignored her cries, kicking her when she stumbled. Her pleas grew more urgent as they headed for a rift, but the never seen did not slow. Mitya tried to follow, but by the time she found a way to the cave, the never seen had vanished, leaving nothing but red. As she turned to head back, Mitya heard Lady Gisela scream, Don't do this! Did everything fell silent, and a raspy voice said, It's done.
A million icicles stabbed Sophie's heart as she recognized the voice. Brunt. Clearly, he'd recovered from his wounds. The memory shifted forward to when Meteor joined Terra by the poisonous snake. By the poisonous lake, he was studying the trail of red, which was darker than the deadly water. They both turned as the scent of smoke laced through the air. A single black plume rose into the sky before the mountains, mountain winds whisked it away. That is all we know, Mitty said, as Sophie removed her shaking hands from Mitty's temples. You'll share this with the collective? Lur asked. We will. Fitz answered when Sophie couldn't. Mitty stepped closer, wiping the tears of Sophie's face. I'm sorry to burden you with this responsibility, Miss Foster. No one should face such horrors. Especially you. I'm not worried about me, Sophie told her, not feeling brave enough to look at Keith. We must leave you now, Mitya said, dipping a slow bow. But we promise to report anything new we discover. Be careful, my friends, Kala said, hugging them both. Things are not as they seem. Indeed, they are not. Lur told her, kissing Kala's cheeks. They both took one last look at Sophie, their eyes focused on her moondark pin. Then they disappeared into the trees. Okay, Kif said, taking Sophie's hands again. You have to tell me what my mom's done. Do you want me to talk to him? Fitz transmitted. Sophie shook her head. Keith was asking her. I'll be right inside if you need me. Fitz promised before he led the others away. Come on, Sophie whispered, followed by the river. The bark felt rough and damp, but she knew this was the kind of conversation that needed to happen sitting down. If she killed someone, just tell me, Keith whispered. Sophie tangled their fingers together, squeezing so tight their knuckles faded to white. It's not about what she does, what she's done, Keith. It's about what might have happened to her. Once she started, the story poured out in every horrifying detail. But they haven't found a body she finished, so we don't know anything for sure. Keith stared blankly at the river. What are you thinking? Sophie asked when the silence turned suffocating. Strange question coming from a telepath. You know I would never invade your privacy like that. Give sight. I'm thinking she deserves to be dead. His voice meant the words, but his eyes didn't. It's okay to be sad, Keith. No, it's not. Not after what she's done. She's still your mom, no matter how angry you are. I'm more than angry, Sophie. I am I don't know what the word is, but I don't care what happens to her. Then why are you crying? She reached up to wipe his cheek and showed him the tear on her finger. I... The rest of his words twisted into a sob. Sophie held him tightly, letting him soak the shoulder of her tunic with tears. She wondered if Fitz had felt this helpless when she'd done the same thing to him. He'd seemed so strong and steady that day when he'd taken her from her human family. She wished she could be the same for Keith. We don't know anything for sure yet, she repeated. It doesn't matter. I don't even know what I'm rooting for. You don't have to root for anything. But as much as you hate her, part of you still loves her. So whatever happens, you're going to have to grieve. Not if I can help it. Kif pulled away. His eyes were red and puffy, but they seemed dry now as he turned back to the river. Want me to leave you alone? Sophie asked. Kif nodded. Actually, no. It's not good for me to be alone right now. I'll do something stupid. I need... I don't know what I need. Just don't go. Sophie stayed. Keith leaned his head against her shoulder and Sophie counted his breaths, considering what a strange thing Griff turned out, Griff turned out to be. Grady and Edelin closed themselves off. Fitz pushed everyone away. She couldn't figure out how Keith was handling it all yet, but she was glad he wanted her to stay. Their houses were dark by the time Sophie and Keith returned from the river, and Keith clung to her hand until the last possible second. She tried to think of something to tell him, something that might help him sleep. The best she could come up with was, If you need me, throw something at my window. Keith tried to smile, but it looked too painful. Say tomorrow, Foster. Then he was gone. The girl's house was quiet when Sophie crept into the main room. She'd missed dinner and bedtime, but it didn't matter. Eating and sleeping were definitely out of the question. 
How's he doing? Bionna's voice asked as soon as Sophie set foot in her bedroom. She bit back her scream as Bionna appeared in the shadows. Sorry, Bionna said. I couldn't sleep. She followed Sophie over to her bed and they both sat on the edge. Neither of them bothered to turn on the lights. Sophie knew she, pro she should probably tell Bionna everything was fine, but she went with the truth. I think this is going to change him. Me too, Bionna whispered. So, what do we do? I don't know. I don't know, Sophie admitted. Somehow, we'll have to find out the truth. Kif is going to need answers or closure. In the meantime, we'll have to keep him together. Seconds passed before Bionna said, I, I can't believe the never seen would do that. Sophie couldn't either, which was the scariest part. She'd known their enemies were dangerous, but this was a whole other level of evil. Lady Gisela was one of their leaders, and they tortured her and imprisoned her, maybe murdered her. So what would the ogres and never seen do to them if they were ever captured? Is it okay if I sleep in here tonight? Bianna asked, the tremble in her voice hinting that she shared Sophie's worries. Sure, Sophie whispered. She got up to change into her pajamas, and by the time she'd brushed her teeth, Bianna had already crawled under the covers. The bed was so big, she could barely tell anyone else was there. But the soft sound of Bianna's breathing made the room feel warmer. She thought Bianna was asleep until Bianna asked, We're going to stop them, right? Sophie stared at the wall, her mind flashing through all the losses they'd suffered. Kenrick, Jolie, Prentice... The dwarves on Mount Everest? Maybe Lady Gisela. She had a horrible feeling there would be more casualties before this was over. But she was sure of one thing. Yes, we're going to stop them.